sugar it's your girl Risa coming to you guys this morning it is may I have just a little more Jesus Monday y'all and uh, I just want to say happy Monday happy Monday happy Monday giving praise and honor to the Lord for a day that he has made he has laid out a path for us you guys that we have to seek him to help us follow I am out and about this morning I took my daughter to work and I did something this morning that I really didn't know how I would feel to do or if I really wanted to do. Um, for those of you that have been with me from the beginning, you guys know that I am adopted. My mother is deceased, but my father is alive. He's in a nursing facility and um, I was given up signed their rights over years ago and we've never really had a relationship um, so I took it upon myself to go and find him today so that's where I'm leaving now and um, I don't know he didn't know who I was at first and so I I had to ask do you know who I am because I talked to him after I said hey how you doing you know he said oh I'm okay he looked at me and he said oh I'm okay and then he put his head back down and I say well do you know who I am and he was like uh Looking at me dumbfounded, like, should I? I said, do you know who I am? And he looked up at me for a while. He said, he just stared at me for a minute. He said, is that T? And I say, yeah, that's T. He kind of chuckled a little bit. He said, oh, shit. I don't know how to feel about that y'all I really don't and from that moment on there was really no conversation I didn't know what to say to him you know I was asking him how he feel and what's going on there he answered you with one word there was really no dialogue and it could be because of whatever state he's in and um um so I just, you know, would ask. I really did not know what to say. From the heart, I didn't. Because I've never had a relationship with him. I don't know how to talk to him. And, you know, knowing that his, his mind come and go. And um, he's, kind of, he's hard of hearing. So you got to talk loud in order for him to hear you. And um, he didn't know about Corey, of course. He knew about my three older children, and I thought he knew about my two younger girls, but um, I guess, you know, his mind, it may just not be registering, but they know him, but he just don't remember them. And I just hope I didn't bring up any bad feelings for him, you know? Right now, I have a kind of sick feeling inside. I really do. And, um, I don't know. I begin to get choked up, you know, as I left because I just didn't know what else to say. And he's sitting in the recreation room. It's not like he was in his room and I could sit there with him. And, you know, I don't even know what I would say. And he's, um, I had to get some tissue for him to wipe his mouth because he was trying to drink juice and I don't know if I think he's had some strokes or something I don't know if he has problems holding his fluids or what but it was just running all out his mouth and so I was getting tissue to, to you know to clean him up and he kind of looked like he was um, ashamed and you know I tried to kind of lighten the mood a little bit I say you look just like granny you know, which is his mom, which was my grandmother, of course. And um, he just dropped his head. And I 
I just don't know, y'all. I told him about Corey. He asked me how old was Corey, and I told him. And I told him, I said, today is his one-year anniversary of... Um, he, we found out last year that he had cancer, and I said, he's a cancer survivor. And his eyes got real big. He was like, oh... He's a cancer survivor, so I looked on my phone to see if I had a picture of him, and I let him look at him, and he, you know, took the phone out of my hand, and he just stared at him for a while. I don't know. It brought up some feelings in me. And I just hope I didn't bring up any, you know, feelings in him to make him feel bad or have him to, you know, remember any bad memories or regrets or anything like that. Because I literally have not seen him in I don't know how many years. And, um, he was in the hospital the last time I saw him. <laughs> he had had a stroke. He had, um, they had taken him to the mall or something like that. He was at the same nursing facility. Well, I don't know if he had a stroke, but he, he passed out and they rushed him to the hospital. And I went to the emergency room where he was and he recognized me then, you know, instantly, but he didn't have much to say. And I would just, you know, have to engage him. And I'm, even though I run my mouth, I, you know, when I'm in a position like that, I just don't know what to say. I was at a loss for words then. Because we have a history. We have had our disagreements, but we've never really had a relationship, you know. And I think the last time I saw him where he was really able-bodied and in his right mind, um, I had been to church and the pastor spoke about letting God fight your battles and he said I don't know who I'm talking to today but somebody that has really hurt you and done you wrong will come to you and apologize if you let God have it and literally that day I was at my grandmother's house and he came and sat on the arm of the sofa, the arm of the chair. And he apologized to for all the things that he said to me, all the things that he's done. And but we never, you know, really were able to have any type of father-daughter relationship. He has other children. He never spent any time with me, you know, and it's not a pity party. I'm just saying, stating facts, and I don't know, you know, I can remember being with him when I was younger in the car. He had a station wagon and he had me and my sister, which is his daughter, and riding with him, he was like, I'm going to find your mother, which is my birth mother. And uh, I can remember being in the back seat and he pulled up at a building, which was like a bar or a pool hall or something like that. And he actually got out with a piece of paper, went in, and my mom was actually in there. And they came outside and he put the paper on the hood of the car and um, gave her the pen. And I remember seeing her sign something. And those were the papers for her to sign over her rights and he signed it and initialed it and they both signed over their rights to me to his mother and um, she never said anything to me he never said anything he just got back in the car and I'm looking at her like is she gonna say hello or, or anything and she never did and she just went on about her business and that stuck with me for a long, long time. <sighs> I 
I really feel sick inside. I kind of wish I hadn't went. I guess this is what I've been dreading because it brought up a lot of feelings that I didn't want to feel or I had pushed away. And um, I don't know. But um, right now I'm headed to this walk-in dental clinic if they are open. To see if, because I've been had a toothache for two days. And um, hold on. So... I am sleepy, seriously sleepy. I went to bed at five. Went to bed at five o'clock, and I was right back up at seven, so that I could take my daughter to work and for me to come to the dentist. Because otherwise, she would be she would have been getting off from work, and the place would have been closed. So let me go in here and see what they can do for me. I'll be back if it's God's will. Bye, sugar.